I'm 28 years old female, and I live in a big city in a house with my husband. Our house is at the end of a row of houses on our street. So we often get people knocking on our door to sell things. Now my husband started a new job recently, so as part of his training, he had to fly to Texas and stay at the company's training center there for two weeks. I wasn't excited about being home alone for two weeks, but I decided it was time to be brave. I can watch all the shows my husband doesn't like and cook the food he doesn't enjoy. He left for his work trip, and I kept going with my usual daily schedule. I work part-time, around 20 hours a week, so I am often at home watching TV and cleaning the house. Then one day, I'm sitting on the couch when I hear a knock on my door. I thought it's the delivery person dropping off a package. I wait to hear the glass door shut, which usually means the delivery driver has left. But I hear nothing. Then there's another knock. I'm not very social, so I don't feel like dealing with any solicitors. I ignore the person and keep watching TV. I hear another knock. I pause the show and go to peek out our front window. There's a man at my front door that I don't recognize, so I don't open the door for him. I see him kind of throw up his hands in frustration and then leave. It creeps me out, but I don't think about it again for a few more days. I come home from work a few days later and start cooking dinner. I'm in the middle of washing some dishes when I hear a knock at the door again. I go to peek out the blinds and see the man from a few days before with another guy. The first man, the one who has now been here twice, is a huge guy. And honestly, he looks almost exactly like Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. He's big, muscular, tall, and he's holding a clipboard. The other guy with him is very skinny. He's not very tall, but taller than me. Can I help you? Yeah, we are here to set up your security system. We are from a security company. I own my house. I bought it before my husband and I met, and we didn't have a security system installed. And also, I hadn't set up an appointment with anyone. So I'm pretty sure you have the wrong house. Your husband probably made the appointment and forgot to tell you. My husband and I always talk about big decisions like this before we decide. He holds out his clipboard to show me my address written on it. He says I can check it out. For some reason, I unlock the glass door to take a look at it. Maybe my husband really did forget to tell me they were coming. Maybe he wanted to make me feel safer by getting an alarm installed. The form looks pretty standard. We just need to come inside and check for weak points, so we know where to install the sensors. It won't take long. His partner, who hasn't said anything yet, nods in agreement. Well, I'm alone at home right now because my husband is at work, so I don't feel comfortable letting you inside, I tell them. We're really from security company, says Skinny, showing his name badge. I could print out a name badge that says I'm the Pope, but that doesn't mean anything, I reply sarcastically. The Rock starts gesturing like he's going to try to come in the door. So I tell them I'm sorry, but I'm canceling their services, and they need to leave. The Rock seems angry, starts pushing against the door that I have halfway open, and stares down at me like he might hurt me. We really need to come inside and take care of this now he says, looking past me into my living room. By now I'm really angry that they're pushing so hard to get inside after I've already said no. I tell them to leave, and that I'll reschedule another day for the appointment. I shut the door in their faces, lock it, and wait for them to go away. I wanted to see what car they got into, but they left on foot and started walking down the street. Once I was sure they were gone, I texted my husband, but he said he had no idea who they were. So I immediately googled the phone number for security company and explained everything to the woman who answered. She told me those men weren't from her company, 
and there was no record of me ever scheduling an appointment with them. Now I'm really scared, and she suggests I go to the police and make a statement. I went to talk to the police, but they said they don't have much they can do, since I don't have any information about the men. I told them I'd be home alone for at least another week, so if they could drive around my neighborhood a few times a day to keep an eye out for them. They agreed to do that, and then I went back home. I made sure every window and door was locked, and tried to put it out of my mind. The next week, I go out to lunch with my mom in the city. When we come back to my house to hang out for a bit, my next door neighbor is outside. My mom hasn't met her yet, so I introduce them. We're standing outside my house chatting when a car pulls up. It's a plain, unmarked regular car. A woman walks up the steps and says, Hi, I'm from the security company. My partner was here a few days ago to do an installation, but you wouldn't let him in. Feeling annoyed, I said, there might be a misunderstanding. I already called your company and they said they have no record of installing a camera at our house. So who are you? And wait here until I call the police. When I went to the room to call 911, the woman ran away. When the police came to the house, they said they couldn't do anything since I didn't get the car's number. The whole situation is creepy and weird. Who they were, I still haven't figured out but they haven't come back to our house since that day. My mom and I are still trying to understand what really happened, and the more we talk about it, the more confusing it gets. So I am a 17-year-old boy, and my family, except for my sister, who is around 21 years old, stayed in her cabin a few miles away. I'm used to staying home alone since this happens a lot in the summertime. It's common because I'm working and can't travel back and forth from the cabin. I'm not usually scared or nervous when I'm home alone anymore, as I've gotten used to the creaks and noises of our old house. And having my sister's dog with me was reassuring as most noises I heard could be traced back to him, whether it was creaks or bumps in the house. If something unusual happened, he'd bark loudly to let me know. However, he's the type of dog that barks at any noise or person outside, so his barking at night was something I was accustomed to. But on Friday, his barking around midnight really worried me. Even though I'm used to being home alone, I'm still scared of the idea of a break-in or someone coming by uninvited. So normally I let him bark for a few seconds, thinking it was just someone walking past our glass door in the nearby alley. I told myself he'd stop barking once they went away. As you might guess, that's not what happened that night. He kept barking and growling for too long, so I got out of bed, which is in the basement, and went upstairs to see what was going on. Just as I thought, he was standing alert by the glass door. It made me feel better for a moment, but when I walked closer to close the curtains and go back to bed, I saw the door was open about two or four inches. I froze. I had let Bosco out earlier that night, but I know I closed the door. I've never left this door open before. I'm a paranoid person with bad anxiety, especially about break-ins and such. So normally when I'm home alone, I'm always careful to close the door. I'm completely sure about this, but in that moment, I didn't let myself think about these facts or accept that I couldn't have left the door open. I knew it would make me spiral into anxiety, maybe even a panic attack, if I couldn't explain it. I closed and locked the door, making sure it was really locked. Since all the lights were off, I used my phone's flashlight to look around the whole second floor of my three-story house. I glanced into closets and other places where someone could hide, just to calm myself down. I didn't find anything, 
so I went back downstairs to my room. While I was downstairs, trying to calm myself, I heard Bosco walking above me on the floor that's also my bedroom ceiling. I thought I might be imagining things when it started to sound like human footsteps mixed with Bosco's. He paced around for about 10 minutes before I put on my earphones and reassured myself until I could fall asleep. Later that same night, at 2 a.m., my sister returned home from work. A few minutes before this happened, I woke up to find Bosco in the basement, which he never goes to. There's even a gate to keep him out. He was whining at my bedroom door. When I got up to let him out, my sister walked in. So we both decided to let him out through the front door instead of the glass patio door, using the same route to let him in. We chatted for a bit before I returned downstairs and my sister went to the bathroom. I got caught up with work and forgot about the door over the next few days. I didn't mention it to anyone until tonight. So my sister and mum were home with me for a movie night, while my dad and brothers were at the cabin. I remembered the door while we were choosing horror movies to watch. When my sister suddenly said that, about an hour after they came home that same night, the door was open again. It was the same door that had been locked from the inside and hadn't been opened since earlier that evening. My stomach sank, and I started shaking as soon as she said that. At first, we tried to come up with explanations, like maybe my sister had let Boss go out and forgot to close the door. But then we remembered we used the front door that night. After that, we tried to figure out why someone would break in and not take anything. In the end, I started to think that I might have accidentally locked someone inside the house. Then that person would be stuck up there, realizing the house wasn't empty, despite it seeming that way, with everyone else in my family away, and all the lights off. Plus, there's a dog who would bark if they tried to come out, letting me know they were still there. Then, while I was in the basement, and my sister was in the bathroom, they must have dashed out through the glass door. This lines up with when they discovered the door open again, wider than before, as if they were rushing to leave quickly, or to avoid the loud noise of it slamming against the door frame. Either way, it fits together too well for me to easily dismiss it. I know it's not very likely, especially since nothing was taken, but in this small town, there have been lots of reports of break-ins where nothing was stolen, or just vandalism and break-ins many times. So it's not as improbable as it might be in a bigger city. I'm really confused and upset thinking about the idea of someone being in my house while I was asleep, alone in the basement. Part of me doesn't want to believe it, but there are too many strange things that fit together to ignore how worrying this is. It took place more than 10 years ago, so I will try my best to remember everything clearly. When I was a child, my home had a balcony, and it was connected to my mother's bedroom, and my bedroom with big, double glass doors. There were two trees next to the balcony, and I often climbed one of them to get up and down from it. The balcony faced the street, one night, when I was about 13 years old, I was home alone because my brother and mother were out. I was reading in bed with a small, dim light. I heard a noise like something moving in one of the trees outside, but I wasn't worried because we often have possums and bats in our area. I had thin curtains on the glass doors, and they faced the street, so the light from the street lamps always came through my curtains. After I heard the noise in the tree, I saw a shadow move slowly past the doors. I quickly turned off my reading light and stayed very still. The shadow was tall, so it wasn't one of the neighbor kids I knew or my mom, who was only five feet tall. 
the person moved slowly, like they were trying not to be noticed. They probably couldn't see into my room, but I could see them, because the streetlights behind him made a dark silhouette. I sat there, unable to move or think, just staying very still. Then, I heard another sound. Someone trying to open a glass door. I didn't know if my mom had locked them or not, but I didn't want to take any chances. So I moved quickly and quietly to my bedroom door and locked it. I listened to what the person was doing. They were still trying to open the glass door, but it sounded like the doors weren't opening. I felt relieved. This person couldn't get in, right? I just had to wait for them to realize that. I heard light footsteps moving back along the balcony to my glass doors. I saw his shadow stop right in front of them. I froze again. He couldn't see me or know that I could see him. I saw the shadow of a hand reaching for my door handle, and my heart stopped. I thought to myself, had I locked those doors today? I was out there earlier. What if I forgot? The seconds before he grabbed the handle felt like forever. Luckily, when this person tried to open the door, it didn't open because it was locked. I sighed with relief, worried that he might have heard me. After that, he started walking back and forth on the balcony. I didn't have a cell phone, because my mom thought I was too young to have one and the landline was at the other end of the house. But I was too scared to look away from this person, even to call for help. I was silently crying, tears running down my cheeks, as I prayed inside that they would just go away. Then, I heard him stop moving. He said, I could just break the glass, you know. Before I could even think about that, I saw car headlights turn the corner onto my street and stop at our gate. My mom had come home. The person on the balcony moved away, and I heard a loud thump as they jumped off. When my mom came inside, I was hysterical and couldn't explain clearly what had happened. Eventually, I managed to tell her, and she called the police. They never found or caught anyone, but a neighbor reported seeing a truck in the street that matched the description of a truck involved in attempted child abductions near my school just a block away, because I walked that short distance every day. The police thought that maybe he had followed me and waited for a chance when I was alone. In 2018, I traveled to Seoul for a week by myself. I was still studying then, doing a semester abroad in Kyoto. Seoul is expensive, so I booked a bed in a hostel. It was supposed to be a mixed dorm for six people. When I arrive, I found out I would be sharing a room with five men who were already staying there. At that time, I was still quite naive and didn't think much of it. Besides, the hostel was already fully booked. There was one guy from Japan, one from Korea, two from China, and one from Germany in my room. The German guy made me feel uneasy from the start, especially the way he stared at me. But I ignored it because I would be out all day anyway. Every day, he asks if I want to hang out and see the sights together. I like to do this alone, so I always come up with an excuse. One time, I accept his invitation to explore Namyangju, but it was very awkward. We have very little to talk about besides small talk. Then, the following morning, as I'm getting ready, putting on makeup and doing my hair, he just stands there and watches without saying anything. I got really annoyed and told him, Hey, can you stop staring at me? It's really creepy, you know. But he just shrugged. Anyway. The whole week, I felt weirded out, but tried my best to avoid him. The other guys in my dorm room were actually very nice. We even went out for dinner together one night. 
Then, on my last day, I woke up too early and fell back asleep. The next time I woke up, he was sitting by my bedside, touching my arm and shoulder. I immediately sat up and asked what he was doing. Even though he was only touching my arm, I felt very disgusted. I always thought I would scream and curse at someone in a situation like this, but I was just dazed and shocked. He then confessed his love for me and said he wanted to meet up when we were back home. When I told him it wasn't possible to be in love after just a week, he insisted he knew his feelings and wanted to show me affection. I felt sick to my stomach at that point. Luckily, he was leaving that morning too and suggested we go to the airport together. But I insisted on taking a later bus and thankfully, he agreed. I couldn't wait for him to leave and just be on my own. I'm glad I didn't see him at the airport, but at one point, I just started crying. It had been so tiring to reject his advances all week and then tell him gently that I wasn't interested. I don't even know how I managed to stay calm and polite to him. But who knows how he would have reacted if I had been aggressive. Looking back, I think I should have insisted on changing rooms. After that experience, I never doubted my instincts again. <laughs>